Hello, Pastor Serrano of Valley Baptist Church, and this is our Wednesday night message uh, for uh, June the 23rd. And uh, we're in the book of Nehemiah. So if you have your Bible, go to the book of Nehemiah. Nehemiah. Chapter number four. <clears throat> Nehemiah chapter number four, I'm going to read three verses. The Bible says, But it came to pass that when Sambalat heard that we built the wall, he was wroth and took great indignation and mocked the Jews. And he spake before his brethren and the army of Samaria and said, What do these feeble Jews? Will they fortify themselves? Will they sacrifice? Will they make an end in a day? Will they revive the stones out of the heaps of rubbish which are burned? Now Tobiah the Ammonite was by him, and he said, Even that which they build, if a fox go up, he shall even break down their stone wall. Just pray. Father God, I pray, Heavenly Father, that you show us from the special scripture, Lord God, how to deal with discouragement. Lord, I pray, Father God, for all those that are feeling discouraged today uh, for whatever reason, Lord God, whether it's because of work problems, family problems, health problems, or other kind of problems, Father God. And they are at a point where they are very discouraged. I just pray, Father God, that you would minister to us through your holy word. Father, we love and we thank you. I ask and pray these things, Father, in the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So, here we have Nehemiah, and Nehemiah has been tasked by the uh, the king. Uh, we see here uh, in chapter number one that he's found out that the city of Jerusalem, the walls are torn down, the city is burnt up, and um, he goes into fasting and he asks and, and praise God uh, for the city. And the king turns out that the king sends him back to uh, Jerusalem to rebuild the wall, and then he provides everything that he's going to need. Uh, so he there he is right here. In chapter number one, the king was Artaxerxes. Artux, Artux was the name of the king in chapter number two, and so he sends them back <clears throat> with provisions and people to rebuild the wall. Now, when they get there, he does an inspection of the wall at nighttime to see the condition of the wall and, and what he's facing and how he's going to uh, do the work with the people that he has. And uh, as soon as they started building and working on the wall, the Bible says here that there, there was individuals there in that, in that, in the part of the country. Uh, one was some ballots. He was one of the leaders there. And another one was uh, Tobiah. And uh, the uh, the Serbians. And uh, they all started talking against Nehemiah and what he was uh, trying to do. We were supposed to build the wall. Started making fun of him. They, they, they took great indignation, verse number one says. So they got very angry that anyone would, would ever come and want to rebuild that city, the city that was torn down. Why would somebody come and rebuild it? Who are these people that are coming to rebuild it? They call them feeble Jews. These feeble Jews, what are these feeble Jews doing? And they mocked them. And they made fun of them. And then he spake before his brethren and the army of Samaria. What do these feeble Jews, what are these feeble Jews doing? Will they fortify themselves? Are they gonna, are they make, gonna make a fort? Are they gonna continue the sacrifices? Are they gonna revive the stones out of the rubbish? 
And Tobiah said, even if whatever they build, even if a fox go up, it shall even break down the stone wall. So right off the bat, Nehemiah finds himself with uh, opposition. Now, when you're a servant of the Lord and you're going to serve the Lord, invariably in your lifetime, you are going to find opposition. You're going to find opposition to uh, just the fact that you're a Christian. Many people are not going to like you because you're a Christian. Uh, many people are not going to like your views because you're a Christian, because you follow the Bible. Um, many Christians are not going to like the fact that you're patriotic. People won't like the fact that you're patriotic because you love your country and uh, you want to serve God. You want to live right and do right. And some people look down at that. And so you're going to have opposition uh, in your lifetime as a Christian. Here's uh, Nehemiah with this large group of people attempting to build a wall. And already the, the people outside are against them. They're against him building the wall. They're against him uh, doing anything for Jerusalem. Um, and they start making fun of him. They say, whatever they build, we're going to tear it down. So what does Nehemiah do? Does he, does he have a, a pity party? Does he, does, he have, does he say, oh, what are we going to do? We need to go back to uh, Shushan the palace. Back in... Back in uh, uh, and uh, now it's called uh, Iran, uh, Persia. Okay, he didn't say, "Well, we need to go. We need to go back to uh, the king in, in, in Persia and, and tell him to send us some troops." Or uh, he, he didn't say, "Well, you know, maybe we should stop and reassess the situation." And uh, he could have had a lot of excuses for stopping. But notice what he does here. He doesn't do any of those things. What he does is he takes his case before God. And that's what we need to do is born again believers. When people uh, attempt to discourage us by speaking evil of us, by saying things against us, hurtful things, unkind things, and kind words, what are we going to do? Are we going to get even? Are we going to go back to Samaria and get an army? No, we're not going to do that. We need to take our case before the Lord. That's what Nehemiah did. Nehemiah, being the man of God that he was, he knew that this was something for the Lord to take care of because God sent him to do this, this mission to build the wall. And whatever opposition came, they were not really going against him. They were really going against God. And you need to realize that when uh, people say unkind things about you or mistreat you, or they uh, persecute you for for being a Christian. Remember, they're not. It's not really you. They're attacking. They're actually attacking the Lord Jesus Christ. It's not you. You just you represent Jesus Christ, and that's what they don't like. So we need to take our case before the Lord, just like Nehemiah did. In verse number four, he says, "Hear, O our God, for we are despised, and turn the reproach upon their own heads." And give them for a prey in the land of captivity. And cover not their iniquity. And let not their sin be blotted out from before thee. For they have provoked thee to anger before the builders. And so God, uh, Nehemiah takes his case to, to God. And he says, Lord, they're really rebuking you. They're provoking you. Because you're our God. And Father, we know that you're going to take care of them. So don't, don't, don't forgive them for what they're doing. And let their reproach they gave us be upon their own heads. And so he prayed and then he began to build. And that's what we need to do. We need to pray and give it to the Lord. Whatever discouragement is coming to our life for whatever reason, we need to just give it to the Lord. We need to trust him that he's going to do his best for us. We don't need to take matters into our hands by getting even and saying unkind things back. Uh, we don't need to do that. 
you'll just be lowering yourself to their standard. So we need to rise above it. And we do that by taking our case to the Lord and giving it to Him and then continue to work. That's what He did. In verse number 6, the Bible says, So we built the wall, and all the wall was joined together unto the half thereof, for the people had a mind to work. And so the people began in earnest. They had a mind to work. Everyone was willing. Everything was going great. I can remember when we first started Valley Baptist Church in 2006. We had some big days. The people had a mind to work. We had one day we had 109 in attendance. I got upset at my brother because he didn't go to church that day. We could have had 110. And uh, it, it was great, you know, everything was going good and it was fine. And, uh, you know, now COVID hits and uh, we closed for a year. And after a year, we have one family return to the church. One family returned to the church. And so we just have to give it to the Lord. Okay. I had a missionary from Russia call me and he wanted to come and, uh, and uh, give us a report. And uh, I had to tell him, I, you know, I only have one family. So I sent them to New Heights Baptist Church because they had a better attendance and they had like 60 in attendance. And so that was better for him. But, you know, having to do that, because people are not willing to come to church. It's kind of discouraging, but we'll just continue. So the opposition uh, uh, didn't stop. The opposition continued. And then uh, verse number seven, the Bible says, but it came to pass that when Sambalat and Tobiah and the Arabians and the Ammonites and the Ashdodites heard the walls of Jerusalem were made up and that the breaches began to be stopped, they were very wroth. Uh-oh. They were angry because they showed up. Now they're super angry because they started building the wall. And this is a these are large armies. They are outnumbered 10 to 1 at least. Nehemiah and the group that he has. And what did they do? Well, now they're really angry. So what are they doing? Verse 8, and conspire all of them together to come and to fight against Jerusalem and to hinder it. So they started, they, they started um, uh, putting out that they were going to attack the city. Started, a, uh, you know, gossiping that they were going to uh, attack the city. And... Uh, when Nehemiah got, got wind of it, that the word was going around that they were going to be attacked by all these armies. Okay. Again, he took his case to the Lord. He said in verse number nine, Nevertheless, we made our prayer unto our God and set a watch against them day and night because of them. So Nehemiah continued to work and now he has to think like a military man and he he, he's thinking like a construction man, but now he has to think like a military man. Now he has to set a watch. Okay? Guards. 24-hour 20, guards. To give warning in case they're being attacked. Verse number 10 says, And Judah said, The strength of the bearers of the burdens is decay. And there is much rubbish, so that we are not able to build the wall. So not only has Nehemiah been uh, received with a lot of anger and mockery because God sent them he's being obedient. But when he starts building, then all the armies around them gathered together and began to put out that they're going to attack him and stop the work. So he takes his prayer to the Lord. Oh, but that wasn't enough. That was the pressure and the, the 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 attacks were coming from the outside but now that's not all he's got problems on the insides because in verse number 10 the bible says that the workers the bearers that's the workers they have to carry the rocks up to the wall and they have to ca carry the mortar up to the wall making those strips up and down uh with uh, those baskets full of material 
they come to Nehemiah, and if it isn't enough, he's being attacked from outside. Now, Satan's attacking him from the inside. They come to him and they say, the, the workers are tired, Nehemiah. They're, they're tired. They, they don't have any more strength. They're done. There's too much rubbish. There's too many piles of things we have to carry to build a wall. But we can't do it. And so they basically gave up. So now he's surrounded by enemies and his own people give up. So on top of that, the attacks from the outside increase. Verse number nine. And the adversary said, they shall not know, neither see till we come in the midst among them and slay them and cause the work to cease. So they started putting out more information. They said, they're not even going to see us when we come in. We're going to come in and we're going to kill everybody. We're going to stop them from building this wall. The Bible says in verse 12, And it came to pass that when the Jews which fell by, by them came, they said unto us ten times, From all places, when you shall return unto us, they will be upon you. And so now, he's faced with his opposition arriving at the city. He's got all these armies ready to attack him. If he starts building, he begins to build. And now they're saying, we're going to attack. You're not even going to see us. We're going to kill everybody. We're going to stop the work. Then all the workers quit on him. They said, we can't carry all those burdens. Our, our, our strength is decay. We're done. We're finished. We can't build this wall. And then the enemy starts another uh, uh, information warfare. And they're using the people that live around the city. And they're coming into Jeremiah and telling him 10 times. <laughs> 10 times. That means like continuously all day long coming to Nehemiah and saying, Nehemiah, Nehemiah, they're going to attack. They're going to attack tonight. Nehemiah, they're going to attack tonight. As soon as it gets dark, as soon as it's daylight. Nehemiah, they're going to come, come in and kill you. you. You're not going to know. So what does Nehemiah do? Does he give up? Does he quit? Not only does he not give up, the work continues. But now he's already put up 24-hour uh, guards. And so now he continues to think military, militarily. And now in verse number 13, look what he does. Therefore I said in the lower places behind the wall and on the higher places, I even set the people after their own, after their families, with their swords and their spears and their bows. So now he's arming everybody. The, the group that is with him is armed. Okay. The Bible says in verse 14, and I looked and rose up and said unto the nobles and unto the rulers and to the rest of the people, be not ye afraid of them. Remember the Lord, all capital letters, Jehovah, which is great and terrible, and fight for your brethren, your sons, and your daughters, your wives, and your houses. You know, as born-again believers, that's what we're fighting for. Yes, there's a lot of opposition uh, to being a Christian now in our own country. The land of the free doesn't seem to be so free anymore. But nevertheless, they cannot stop the work. The work must continue. We need to continue to give out gospel tracts. We need to continue praying for people. And we need to invite those that God puts in front of us. That's all we can do. Because in the end, what are we fighting for? We're fighting for our sons, our daughters, our wives, and our houses. That's what we're fighting for. Okay? We're serving the Lord. And you, you're you a Christian. And I know the Bible says to turn the other cheek. But I think if somebody is attacking your own home and breaking in, I don't think you're going to be turning many cheeks. I think you're going to be getting your weapons to defend your home. That's what you're going to do. And the Bible says, And it came to pass in verse 15, When our enemies heard that it was known unto us that we had found out about their plans, and God had brought their counsel to naught, they would return all of us to the wall, everyone to his work. So they attempted to scare him with uh, warfare, information warfare, and trying to put him into fear. And all he did was pray to God, 
arm the people and continue the work. And that's what we need to do. We need to continue the work that God has left us. Verse 16, And it came to pass from that time forth that the half of my servants brought in the work, and the other half of them held both the spears and their shields and their bows, and the herbergants and the rulers were behind all the house of Judah. They which built it on the wall, and they did bear burdens with those that laid it, every one with one and his with one on his hand, brought in the work, and with the other hand he held a weapon. Not only did he put up guards, but the, those that were working also had a weapon uh, in one hand and a trowel in the other. The Bible says in verse 19, And I said unto the nobles and to the rulers and to the rest of the people, The work is great and large, and we are separated upon the wall one from another. In that place, therefore, ye hear the sound of the trumpet, resort ye thither unto us, our God shall fight for us. So the work continues, the people are armed, he's got guards, he's got 24 hour God watch, and then he gives the uh, uh, the response plan in case of an attack. Where you hear the trumpet sound, go to the trumpet, okay, and God will fight for us. He was moving the people around inside the city as what needed in case they attack from different directions. The Bible says, verse 21, so we labor in the work and half of them held the spears from the rising of the morning till the stars appeared. Likewise, at the same time, said I unto the people, Let every one with his servant lodge with in Jerusalem, that in the night they may be guard to us, and labor on the day. So neither I, nor my brethren, nor my servants, nor the men of the guard which followed me, none of us put off our clothes, say, saving that every one put them off for washing. They slept with their clothes on. You know, when I was in Desert Shield, there's a storm in the, the island of Bahrain. And Saddam Hussein was shooting uh, Scud missiles at us, but could never get the grid for our, for our island. They said that if he would have hit the, the ammunition depot, the half of the island would have gone into the ocean. And uh, so we got a lot of Scud alerts, and I found myself running to the bunker with my mask on flat gear and all i could hear was the breathing of the little valve in the, in, the, in the mask but in my mind my thoughts were going to is this it is this it i was still lost i was still heartened to to jesus i was still living by on my own will but in those moments i can tell you i was afraid i was afraid that if that rocket hit right there while i was running i would be done I'm so glad that it didn't. And the Lord allowed me to get saved. They continue the work. Now they have guards. They're armed. And they're sleeping with their clothes on. Okay. What am I trying to tell you? They accomplished the mission in 52 days. They completed the wall in 52 days. Under literally uh, physical attack mental attack, spiritual attacks, information warfare from within and without. But Nehemiah never wavered. He continued to set his mind on what God sent him to do. And God has sent us to be the light of this world and to be the salt of the earth. And that's what we need to be. No matter what happens, no matter what discouragements come your way, when you feel discouraged, you need to take it to the Lord and ask Him to help you, to give you strength and to give you, uh, to renew a right spirit within you and to restore the joy of your salvation. That's what you need to do. Trust the Lord. Amen. I pray this message was a blessing to you. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you, Lord God, for the example of Nehemiah, how he never waver, Lord, even though he was under attack from within and from without. He accomplished the task you gave him. Father, I pray that we will do the same, that we would not get discouraged, Lord. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you bless Valley Baptist Church, that you help us to be a light to this valley, Lord. And Father, we thank you. I pray for those that are watching and listening, 
those that do not know you as Lord and Savior. I pray for their salvation, Lord God. I pray that they would humble themselves and ask for forgiveness and that they would ask Jesus to be their Savior. Father, we thank you in Jesus' precious holy name. Amen. The Lord bless you. We'll see you on the next one.